Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Alexander Bazzotti. I'm an environmental scientist, and this is a Fusion News episode for February 7th, 2024. I have four stories for you this week. One, control the lightning. Where are we at with nuclear fusion? Two, DOE unites fusion research trailblazers with $42 million injection. Three, liquid lithium lining may lead to smaller affordable fusion reactors. Four, pioneering nuclear fusion reactor shuts down, what scientists will learn. Additionally, I have a bonus story to share if you stick around until the end. One, control the lightning. Where are we at with nuclear fusion? Within this article, Dr. Manuela Calari, a freelance science writer based out of Sydney, Australia, explores the world of fusion energy, some collaborations, and its internationally evolving landscape. Japan is home to the world's largest operational experimental fusion device, the JT-60SA, housed in a six-story machine in Naka, north of Tokyo. This collaboration between the European Union and Japan foreshadows the construction of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, in France. This article explains the underlying processes of fusion, highlighting that creating miniature stars on Earth demands light isotopes heated to hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius, forming ionized plasma. On Earth, it is, of course, more difficult to find naturally occurring plasmas, but as mentioned in the article, we do have a plasma on Earth in the form of lightning bolts. While often overlooked, plasma is the fourth state of matter and the most abundant in our universe. As mentioned in past episodes, artificial intelligence has emerged as a critical catalyst in advancing fusion research. AI optimizes designs, streamlining the development of complex fusion machines, and harnesses plasma physics principles governing fusion processes, um, accelerating the design process to meet evolving challenges. Matteo Barbarino, a nuclear plasma fusion specialist at the International Atomic Energy Agency, notes a significant shift in the fusion industry. Private sector interests and investments surge diverging from the historical government-dominated paradigm. Over the last five years, the private sector has witnessed remarkable growth, with over 40 companies globally, predominantly in the United States, investing in fusion. One standout Australian company and FIA member, HB11 Energy, introduces a novel reactor design. Their approach involves a fuel pellet of hydrogen and boron-11 held within a metal sphere. Two lasers create a magnetic containment field and trigger a fusion reaction. HB11's concept plans to directly generate electricity, promising small cost-effective industrial units worldwide producing safe, clean, zero-carbon energy. This surge in private sector engagement aligns with the commitment of over $20 billion to construct ITER. As mentioned in past episodes, ITER has faced setbacks, but it has also fostered collaborations and knowledge exchange among participating nations, with Australia being welcomed in the ITER Consortium in 2016. Two, DOE unites fusion research trailblazers with $42 million injection. The U.S. Department of Energy, or the DOE, spearheads a game-changing initiative, injecting $42 million into three research hubs at the University of Rochester, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and Colorado State University. This significant effort is part of the Inertial Fusion Energy Science and Technology Accelerated Research Program announced by the DOE in May. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, home to the National Ignition Facility and the place to first achieve energy gain from a fusion reaction, secures 16 million over four years to lead the IFE, Science and Technology Accelerated Research for Fusion Innovation and Reactor Engineering Hub, or known as STARFIRE. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory IFE Institutional Initiative Lead, Tommy Ma, takes on the role as Principal Investigator focusing on high gain target designs, target manufacturing and engagement, and diode pump solid state laser technologies. The hub includes collaborations among universities, national labs, commercial entities, philanthropic organizations, and private IFE company. The University of Rochester's Laboratory for Laser Energetics, or LLE, grabs a $10 million four-year award to head the Inertial Fusion Energy Consortium on Laser Plasma Interaction, or LPI, research hub with a focus on determining the scientific and technological underpinnings for a broad bandwidth, direct drive IFE laser system. The hub aims to address laser plasma instabilities at IFE conditions. Headquartered at Colorado State University, the RISE hub secures 16 million over four years from the DOE. 
co-led by CSU and DOE's SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory, RISE assembles experts from the University of Illinois, Cornell University, Texas A&M, Los Alamos National Laboratory, Naval Research Laboratory, and FIA members Marvel Fusion and Exemer Energy, and also General Atomics. CSU plans to leverage its Aleph laser, which is a high repetition rate petawatt class laser system. These hubs, supported by the DOE Office of Fusion Energy Sciences, plays a crucial role in establishing foundational science and technology for laser-based inertial fusion approaches. Three, liquid lithium lining may lead to smaller, affordable fusion reactors. Researchers at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, or the PPPL, have unveiled an approach to hopefully make fusion reactors smaller and more affordable. Their innovative solution involves coating the internal walls of fusion plasma containers with liquid lithium, a material demonstrating exceptional resilience and performance. The PPPL team operating within the lithium tokamak experiment beta leveraged tokamaks, which as you may know, are advanced devices utilizing magnetic fields to control electrically charged particles by applying liquid lithium to the tokamak's interior, and the scientists achieved remarkable results maintaining high plasma temperatures at their periphery. This breakthrough surpasses previous experiments with the solid lithium coatings, indicating the potential for integrating liquid lithium into large-scale tokamaks. Liquid lithium not only withstands contact with a 2 million degree plasma, but enhances plasma performance. In recent trials, it absorbed 40% of escaping hydrogen ions, reducing the recycling and ensuring a uniform temperature across the plasma. Dennis Boyle, a staff research physicist at PPPL said, if you had a much better energy confinement, you could make the machines smaller and less expensive. That would make the whole thing a lot more practical and cost-effective so that governments and industry want to invest more in it. Four, pioneering nuclear fusion reactor shuts down. What scientists will learn? As discussed in a previous episode, the Joint European Taurus, or JET, a pioneering fusion reactor near Oxford, UK, has commenced decommissioning after 40 years of operation. JET played a pivotal role as a test bed for ITER, informing decisions on materials, fuel, and more. But this decommissioning effort marks the beginning of researchers' plan to meticulously study the 17-year process of dismantling JET to glean insights crucial for ensuring the safety and financial viability for future fusion power plants. Decommissioning a fusion experiment doesn't have to mean bulldozing everything within sight into rubble and not letting anyone near the site for ages, says Anne White, a plasma physicist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge. As stated in the article, instead, engineers' priorities will be to reuse and recycle parts. This will include removing tritium where possible, and this reduces radioactivity and allows tritium to be reused as fuel. Rob Buckingham, who leads on decommissioning for the UK Atomic Energy Authority, which oversees JET, says the sustainable recycling of this scarce resource makes economic sense. JET's decommissioning will contribute valuable knowledge to embed recycling into the design of the spherical tokamak for energy production, or STEP, a prototype commercial reactor in Britain, and the information will also shape future regulations. Now I have a bonus story for you. Primer on fusion reactors, Bob Mumgard and Steve Renter. The bonus story is a conversation with Bob Mumgard and Steve Renner, founders of FIA member company Commonwealth Fusion Systems in Cambridge, Massachusetts, from Pablos Holman and his Deep Future podcast. Now, that is all for Fusion News this week, and I truly hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please let me know by liking this video, leaving a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Have a great rest of your week, everybody, and thank you again for watching.